Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for expanding the IT help desk to streamline the business presented by AAA Northeast. Uh, we are going to go ahead and start today's webinar. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Julie Duke. I am the IT sales manager here at Boss Solutions. Today, what we're going to be talking about uh, and covering in the next hour is how um, AAA Northeast took their IT help desk and to be responsive to all the business goals across the organization, how they expanded it. We're going to show you just how easily customizable these service requests can be made and also automated. And also talk a little bit about their end user satisfaction and just how well it was adopted. Afterwards, uh, we will be answering your questions uh, and do the gift card drawing. Uh, today's presenters will be David Cote, uh, IT Project Manager at AAA Northeast. Also, Craig Lynch, Application Engineer at AAA Northeast. And for Boss Solutions, our Director of Project Engineering, Vishu Nyaga. Uh, just a couple notes before we get started. Everyone will be muted here in the webinar. Uh, we want all of your questions. So there is a question window that is available um, during the presentation at all times. So as you think of questions, please go ahead and submit them. Don't wait till the end and forget them. Uh, and at the end, we're gonna go through all of your questions and get through as many as possible. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to all of you that registered today. Um, afterwards, we really appreciate your feedback. So we will be sending you a survey. So any feedback that you can give us is greatly appreciated and welcomed. Uh, just a little bit about BOSS. Uh, we've been doing IT service management for over 25 years. Uh, the past three years, uh, we've been uh, named a front runners by Gartner Software Advice. Uh, we have three products, Boss Desk for the cloud, Boss Support Central for the on-prem, and Boss 811, which is a one-call ticket management system for the damage prevention industry. Uh, we look forward to um, providing excellent customer support and the latest technology for all of you. So today's presentations uh, will be done by David Cote and Craig Lynch. Uh, they're gonna talk about their service catalogs and how they use it across all their business lines. And the main goal was to achieve simplicity, standardization, and improve the performance for their members. Um, at the end, uh, Vishu will go through uh, a little bit more about Boss Desk. Okay, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to David Cote and Craig Lynch. David and Craig. Good afternoon, Dave Cote and Craig Lynch. Uh, we also have uh, Bill Dezura, Dezura, the VP of IT Operations. And today, as Julie stated, we're gonna be talking about expanding the IT help desk to streamline the business. Julie, can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely, David. Thank you. So AAA Northeast, let's go over the numbers just to give you a scope of what we support. We have 3,300 employees. We have seven call centers supporting our members, 16 driving schools, 11 fleet locations, 5.8 million members, 65 plus branch offices, and five administrative offices. Who, who is AAA Northeast? Well, as you saw, we have 5.8 million members and our business lines are set up to provide the best possible service to our membership. Thus, uh, using the BOSS solution helped us to uh, achieve some of our goals. So our business lines are AAA Auto Glass that you may have used in the past, con consumer lending, American Auto Glass Administration, 
automotive services, branch operations, driving school, insurance, and the travel agencies. And we're going to give examples of how we supported all the business lines and specifically we'll go into automotive services, driving school, and show you some of the capabilities. Our internal departments that we're also supporting are the e-business, the, of course, the information technology, human resources. So in a nutshell, all the business lines are here to support the 5.8 million members. So here, here's an eye chart. And this is to give you a sense of how we collaborated with the business line. And in particular, this is automotive services. And we're keeping track of, you know, the dispatchers are keeping track of their performance with garage, garages. And we want to make sure that we provide the best possible service. When you're on the side of the road, whether you need a new battery, you know, we, we want to get, get to you as quickly as possible and we have a great deal of metric associated with that. So the dispatcher, uh, they go into different categories, but, but we'll explain this chart. This is just meant you know, as an eye chart to show that we get into the requirements before we begin all the development. We absolutely understand the business. So in collaborating with the business line, uh, we wanted to give you their exact wording uh, related to the business line benefits process development, uh, the capabilities that you're going to see very shortly, uh, time reduction, effective coaching, tracking and reporting, approved efficiency, identifications of patterns and recurrent problems, faster resolution to ensure member satisfaction, uh, delegation of tickets, the completion of tickets, uh, reduction in time, reduced mistakes. So there's a great deal of benefits that we achieve beyond, beyond the IT help desk to uh, help streamline the businesses. So let's, let's get right into it. So what we have is a service catalog and the standard, as we were discussing, the standard is the IT help desk that we'll go, go into to show the standard support. Onboarding, which uh, we will probably get, there's a lot of questions on onboarding and we can We'll give you some examples of the onboarding, but the uh, the business lines that we supported, uh, specifically automotive services, driving school, facilities, workforce management, and change management. We'll get into the details details of that. So let's let's start with the I, IT help desk. So we of course, like all of you, probably have hardware application software, uh, reporting, security access. And uh, our vice president, Bill Deserver, he was like, you gotta keep it simple for the user. You gotta keep it simple. So that, that was our edict. And uh, I, I believe we met that. So on the front end, you see that, you know, the user comes in, they don't have to put their name. It's, it's based, if you create the ticket, uh, your, your name automatically gets put there. If you're an IT help desk technician, then you could put someone's name on behalf of them if you're opening a ticket. Hardware, the standard desktop, equipment move, laptop, mobile phone, monitor, uh, a description, and then attach them. Okay. Then uh, application software, uh, we, have, we have a lot of software. So we come in, they can select all the software. The great thing, uh, uh, the great thing about Boss, it's very simple to add. And I, I wanna emphasize that all of these tools were, were built with the default tools right out of the box. So none of this is customized, but uh, Boss does provide a capability and we may take them up on some customization that we may, may need specifically uh, for AAA Northeast. So here's, here's the type of request, add software, user license. So priority is a big, big aspect where we want to keep track of the performance. So we have low, medium, high, critical SLAs. And when we were first creating this, 
you know, the thought was everyone would put critical, but I think we defined it well where we said this is where the business is unable to operate 10 plus users. So uh, everyone's pretty good on that. And uh, when we get a critical ticket, we try to respond. Our metric is responding within two hours and resolving within eight hours. So let me go back here. And one of the things that uh, our vice president asked for, because we are deploying laptops hundreds and hundreds, over 500 laptops. So he needed to, uh, he needs to approve all the laptops. So he asked for a capability where someone can come in very easily, uh, you know, put in, put in the request for what you want, club email on your personal mobile phone, access to the personal computer, the laptop, phone stipend, and cell phone. Okay, so that's really easy. Uh, the immediate manager is notified, then uh, uh, Bill gets approval, and then he gets to uh, research it and then provide approval. And having the required fields on the form ensures that he gets the information that he needs to make his decisions are provided once that ticket is submitted. Thank you, Craig. So here's a report. You come in to report, and this is specifically for the IT help desk, uh, which is very cool. It has the total number of tickets for the year, the number of open tickets, point and click. You go into the open tickets, uh, you know, the, the number of closed tickets. And we, we stay on top of that uh, regularly. And the, the other thing is we're able to um, come here and create reports. So you can create a specific report and uh, you create the report, then you can download the CSV file. So this is very cool. So there, there's a CSV file there. You create it, and let me bring up. And you can save it and, uh, so that only you can see it, or you can make it available globally. It really depends upon the, uh, the nature of the information and who should see what. So this is what we did. We have an overall breakdown of all our different categories. And what our vice president needs to keep track of is all the open tickets. So these are the number of days open. These are all our technicians. So this is a customized report. So being able to download the CSV file, you can customize. So that, that, gives, you, that gives you a lot of power. So let me get into, uh, further get into the meat of the on, onboarding. So when we have a new hire, so you come in the first name, the employee number, the department, the requisition type, the supervisor, uh, you know, general uh, computer, whether you need a laptop or a desktop, uh, the type of Microsoft uh, Office licensing, the email, standard, in, standard uh, needs that every employee will require. For a particular business lines, you can uh, click the actual, the, the actual uh, applications that are needed for the particular uh, employee. So what this does is this, when you click this and then, you know, submit the request information, it creates, uh, it creates tasks. So all the business line will get the task. For this in particular employee, you need to add the epic. You need to add, add the pay line. You need to add the black line. So that's, that's a, a key capability. So let me go into um, some let me go to tickets. Oops. One second. And there's a lot of flexibility with this too. It's not as if you create a field and you have to keep it there. If you make it required, you can, and you find that it's not needed to be required. It, the system is flexible enough to allow you to make changes. And uh, so, so it makes it very, very uh, flexible. Thank you, Craig. So what we did is we came into tickets, uh, we, uh, create a new hire, we type the selection, then we're going to go into uh, 
ticket 21176, and it's a, a new employee. So we go through, and then here's all the tasks. So what you see is this person needs CMS access, CRM access, Epic access. Uh, you can come in, this type, set up the account, uh, IT insurance, who the agent is, and then they can put a note uh, when it's all completed. We, there are approvals that you can request if you need it. So here's the uh, uh, request approval. We have uh, many approval boards. So you can uh, select you know, who you need to approve this particular request. Okay, that's, that's a bit, just to give you an idea of the new hire capability. So we can get into, we also have it automated so when the, um, we, have, we have it automated when the uh, user wants to, uh, you know, download additional information, we can do that. So automotive services, uh, we have an auto facilities feedback portal, automotive technology. So this is the business line. This is supporting, you know, automotive technology. This is, you know, when we talk about streamlining the business needs, this is what we're talking about. We have uh, the re request type, we have the different applications. So based on the applications, you have access approval, uh, add remove user, uh, fleet contractor request, you put the facility, the facility name, the title, attachments. So we keep it, we keep it really simple. Uh, automotive feedback, where you come in and the actual type. So the, these are particular garages where the dispatcher uh, had issues, like if it was service delays, uh, these are the different service delays. And we can update this very easily. Uh, driver service, uh, the demeanor of the driver. So we update these regularly to make sure we standardize AAA equipment problem, shop equipment, call recovery delay. So that's, that's just an overview of that, the different shifts, shift, the facilities. And then the user can come into, uh, come into tickets. What we created for them, you can create your individual reports, but we created an, auto, an automated feedback report. So this is very helpful to the, uh, to the agents, to the fleet, and, and providing support for, for our uh, service line, the automotive services line. So we have facility ID, uh, the number, you can sort by team, you can sort by requester, uh, you can sort by agent, sorry, sorted, sorted by agent, you can support by uh, e-status, so it's been assigned, but it gives you a, a great deal of flexibility, the uh, global reporting. So let me go, so we're here. Uh, we're also working on a new capability, uh, the Northeast in, in Independent Service Provider. That's uh, a capability of being able to rapidly deploy new garages. So that, that's in process. And yeah, and right now those are all paper forms and there are multiple departments that are involved in that process, in, that, in uh, the, the application process. And I, you know, we were given a form that they currently use, and it was very easy to take that form and and mimic it in this system. And this way, there's a digital copy. Okay. Then we have uh, driving school. So in the within the driving school, again, the driving school has their IT help desk tickets. So they have hardware. They have software but they needed a capability of driving, keeping track of driving school inquiries. So again, here we have the type of uh, request, classroom, uh, the student, the, the caller name, the student name, the phone number, uh, the driving school that 
was impacted. And again, what we're showing you is the simplicity of creating a new request. Uh, the vice president for the driving school provides all the refunds and adjustments. So he needed to uh, keep track of the type of request, you know, whether it's an adjustment, a refund, a write-off, call a name, the student name, the phone number. Then we move on to uh, facilities. So within the facilities, uh, again, this was a custom requirement where we had, you know, the location category, whether it's a branch, the actual location, uh, the state that it's in, uh, the service request. So again, we use this format where the building grounds, we have carpentry. And again, we collaborate with the business line where they can absolutely make changes. Uh, and, and we try to use, even though as you saw with that flow chart, uh, we get the uh, initial requirements, but we sit down and we collaborate and we, we go through it step by step. And we actually, we actually develop with the business line because it's, it's that easy to develop. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go through and just kind of give you a quick summary of the, uh, service catalog, where we were with, um, we'll go into the auto facility feedback portal. So you can literally come in and we actually had the vice pre senior vice president for automotive services. When we were developing it, we had him, we gave him control where he could move, move the fields. You can move the quickly move the fields all around. You can uh, create, you can create a new field. You can just, you can drag, drag and drop new fields. You can create a paragraph. You can create, uh, uh, bring down drop down list. So it's it's very it's very easy it's very easy to manipulate manipulate. So that that is huge and very powerful. So let me go into teams. What we do is what's very critical uh, during the routing during the routing process is the uh, teams created. So we have Autoglass, we have the managers, the fleet managers, uh, driving school administrative uh, facilities, uh, IT, which is critical IT application development. So when the ticket is created, we send to the team and you can create round robin uh, capabilities, okay? Workforce management is another one. So I want to emphasize these are all the capabilities beyond the IT help desk where well, we're meeting with the client, uh, the workforce management, they were able to give us ideal requirements. They came to us, said these are the requirements. We collaborated with them. Uh, we created uh, off phone activities. Again, this, we standardized it to make it very easy, schedule changes. And, and these kind of, uh, these forms you're looking at now, these were all done uh, prior uh, using Excel spreadsheets, which every, you know people are comfortable with, but they wanted a place where the data could be stored and retrieved and more easily um, uh, really looked over for, um, you know, whether they want to go back and look at that old ticket, it's, it's a lot easier to find an old ticket than it would be to find an old exp, uh, Excel spreadsheet. Well, let me sh <clears throat> show you all the way of automated feedback. So let me show like the different categories where you have, you can come in and select workforce management. So it's this easy. You click work workforce management, hit go, and then what we what we created was uh, a category WS, WFM for uh, workforce management. Okay, so that's that's how easy it is to use. 
uh, one of one of the coolest things that we use is the uh, that we really like with NIT uh, is change management. So Boss does have a change management capability, but we we needed more specifics, more fields. So you come into a change, we have the start date, the start time, the end time, the subject, who is making the change, the impacted service, the level, the level of change, whether it's greater than 30 minutes, whether it's less than 30 minutes, uh, the business reason for the change, uh, the details, uh, testing plan is required. These are required fields. You, you can be brief, but if you need, uh, you're deploying a new server, you have to keep track of what firewall rules or uh, the different applications to be loaded. You can uh, attach a test plan back out. Uh, this is creative where we- I like this one best. Where we, my favorite. Where we selected the teams that we believe are impacted on this particular change. So that's, uh, and, it, and, and it works similar to uh, the onboarding where uh, app development will get a task and it will say, you know, please check out this particular change. Okay. So then, So with the uh, with the change management too, there was a request to be able to take these tickets, take this information, and put it into a standardized calendar, which with um, the use of an API that uh, that Boss Systems has, we were able to come up with this. One of the developers here created this through the uh, the Boss API. So, you know, our, our vice president, Bill Dezura, he was like, okay, <clears throat> we have all these changes. What if we have, you know, multiple changes on any given day? So we can on September 11th, we had, a, you see all the changes. So we, everyone has access to this SharePoint calendar. And as Craig was saying, uh, boss uh, collaborating with the boss developers, they, they assisted us in coding and connecting to the BOSS API to connect to our SharePoint calendar. So you can connect, so you just can click, then you can, here's the description, bang. It brings you right into the change. So this way, all our, technology team they can look they can look at the particular calendar they can um, see all the changes being made and it's it's very it's very powerful and we've really just started using the api so there's a lot more that you know, we can explore and uh and enhance so in summary what i want to, what we want to say is uh in collaborating with boss and they, they've been very helpful using standard out-of-the-box capabilities. We expanded our IT help desk, our onboarding capability, and we, we streamlined the business for automotive services, for driving schools, for facilities, workforce management, and internally within our own IT uh, uh, department. And, uh, and we are also planning on moving change management to uh, the entire business lines. So thank you very much for your time. And I'll pass it back to the boss. Thank you, David. Um, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, that was really, really informative. Um, my name is Vishu um, Nayagam. I'm Director of Product Engineering. I'll be giving you a uh, top-level overview of our ITSM Boss product. Um, David has shown a lot of our capabilities. Uh, this product is not just for IT. Um, you can use this product for um, any, any vertical. 
Uh, this product is completely cloud-based, um, so it's totally maintenance-free. Uh, and also, uh, it's completely browser-based, so you can uh, use this product as long as you have an internet connection. It works on all platforms, uh, and also it comes with a mobile application on the Android and the iOS platforms. Um, it, has, it has got a very easy-to-use interface. Uh, it comes with a beautiful... Um, end user portal as you can see this this is the end user portal on the application it comes with uh, you can have customized knowledge base for your end users um, everything can be customizable uh, boss desk allows you to <coughs> customize the product to your business line requirements easily automated all your business line requirements uh, with totally out of the box features uh, as david has uh, demonstrated some of the capabilities uh, <coughs> Also, it comes with a beautiful service catalog. You can build your own service catalog. Um, no matter how complicated the forms are, you'll be able to easily accomplish these forms using your drag and drop um, design editors. And any business line can customize the form. They can uh, hide and show this form based on their requirement. Um, they can um, target to a specific uh, department uh, and whatnot. So it's a completely flexible um, system. And also, it's completely ITL aligned. So this product uh, comes with a lot of ITL aligned uh, processes. Uh, we have uh, um, <clears throat> we have uh, asset management, so the beautiful dashboard and reporting. Uh, each user gets their own dashboards and reports. Um, you got a beautiful, uh, you got a great uh, CMDB configuration management database. Asset management, we can pull. Uh, we have a discovery agent which pulls all the asset inventory. Uh, it can integrate with your Active Directory also. Um, we have software management. We have contract management. You have vendor management. We have purchase order management. Uh, we also have like incident management. And problem management um, is part of the product. Change management, task and approvals. We got a, like a reporting engine. Um, and you can customize all the reports and whatever you want. We have a scheduling, uh, we have a scheduler, you can schedule reports and also as well as you can schedule tickets to reports and tickets. You can email the report um, way ahead of time on a scheduled basis. Um, also on a very, very uh, technical level, all parts of the Boston's product can be customizable. We have tags features, we can do custom fields, you can extend our UI with your own fields, um, and you can add fields to any of this module, like ticket, problem, change, vendor, and everything. We can track all the locations. It comes with um, an announcement feature. <laughs> uh, we, we do integrate with a lot of third-party software. Some of them are shown here. We collect Dell and HP and Lenovo warranty information. We have a deep integration with product level integration with TeamViewer. Also, as David has demonstrated, we can use our open API to connect Basta system with any third party system. Um, you, can, you can have your developer staff use our API to connect any, any system with our product. <clears throat> and um, some of the other core features we have is like we have like email to ticketing options. You can create your own emails and everything, uh, and it can read those emails and uh, create tickets. We have notification engines. So you can customize the notifications. We have approval boards, um, approval boards, team concept, um, centralized uh, permissions, role-based permission set, uh, everything. One of the biggest features in our uh, product is remote tools. So you can basically, anything which can run on a command line can be integrated into our product. That becomes, um, that makes Boston's very, very valuable tool for your technicians. You can basically bring any command line tool which you execute into seamlessly into BOSS Desk as a UI element. Um, as for the authentication, we work with Active Directory authentication so that your users don't have to create BOSS Desk login. We also do SAML. We can do Open ID authentication, um, SAML 2 authentication. Uh, <clears throat> So we have a, like a full-fledged API documentation uh, and you can use the doc, uh, API set um, to integrate and further enhance our product into your other systems. Um, <clears throat> that's a very high, uh, high level overview of our product. If you have any questions, use the, use the Q&A 
um, session on the Zoom and type in your questions and, and we'll be more than happy to answer all your questions uh, at the end of this, uh, uh, before the end of this presentation. Thank you. Um, so now yeah, we'll be taking some questions. Um, first question is actually for David. Uh, David, how long did it take your team to create a service pattern? I would say we started with the legacy boss implementation. <clears throat> so what what we focused on was you know making sure we met all the requirements of the legacy and moving on. I would estimate about three months. Okay, and what was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome in establishing the service catalog? Uh, collaborating with the business line, we wanted to make sure that we were servicing them. Uh, that I, w I wouldn't call that an obstacle. I, I, that was a, that's our mission to make sure uh, the business line's needs are always taken care of. So what once we completed a particular module. We reviewed it with the uh, customers and business line and our customers, you know, the IT help desk as well, because that's, that's the foundation of where we began. Okay. Uh, next question is for David and Craig. Um, how did you get the user base to accept the concept um, to use the new process? Well, the, actually, the users were very excited about moving from the legacy system to a cloud-based solution. They found uh, when we were when we were prototyping it, they were like, "Oh my gosh, this is so much better than what we had. It's so easy to use." So it, it was an easy easy path to move from the legacy to the new cloud-based boss solution. Yeah, we really gave them less. They were really. It, on the, on the outside, it looks like there are fewer options to look at when you open up one of those uh, service catalog entries. But when you're looking, when you when you look at the drop downs, the freeform space to add any pertinent details, uh, it really uh, it, I think it shortens the duration and any confusion uh, in creating the ticket. I think that was a big a big part of it really less to look at and, and, and easy to use. Okay, perfect. And uh, what has been the reaction of the management team to the changes? Well, the, the management team is very happy, especially with the SLAs, the reporting, the flexibility. As you, as you saw, uh, we're able to uh, download reports, the change management, creating the calendars, so the feedback is, as a matter of fact, when uh, Automotive Services uh, started the customization, the other business lines saw it, and they, we, we continually have business lines coming to us to expand and support their automation needs. Okay, and the next question for David and Craig is, can you show us some uh, samples of your workflow? Sure. The um, I think the the spreadsheet is the best. Not the spreadsheet. The oh, can um, you can you share that the screen with us? Yeah. Hold on a second. Do you see the um, this is our workflow for specifically automotive services? So a dispatcher. Uh, logs into the automated feed, feedback tool, and I could I could show. Let me show that again as well. So they log into the automated feedback tool here, and the dispatcher puts in the information: the uh, day of week, the facility, uh, the type the type of request, whether it's service delay, <clears throat> then. Uh, they, again, they select the category. Uh, it gets immediately sent to autom automated notification 
Let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't know if you can see this okay. So automate a notification to the immediate manager uh, based on whether they select a fleet or a state, it goes to the field managers who sends it, uh, who provides a uh, notification. What this really is within the system, it's the approval boards. So they go in and select approval, but what we call it, it's really to notify the field ops teams. Uh, the immediate manager uh, provides the feedback Oops. and again on the if it was a fleet notification it comes into the fleet managers and then they communicate with fleet operations so the notification is whether between field field notification and fleet notification so that's the workflow and it's really improved communication and, and sharing of information to, so that everyone is really uh, on the same page. And even within, uh, you know, work, workforce management, keeping track of all the off phone schedule changes, manager overrides. So they have a small team uh, within automotive services that are handling all the uh, requests. But before it was a spreadsheet, and now it's uh, automated and uh, well integrated with reports. Okay, perfect. And the next question is for Vishu. Um, can the command line integration work with PowerShell? Um, and can parameters be passed from the page to the PowerShell? Yes, Julie. So I'm going to show you an example like how a PowerShell uh, script can be done. So basically what we have is like how we integrate, we call it remote tools. So um, when you go to our asset management, this is an asset and we can integrate all your command line tools from here for some of the examples are here. This could be anything. It could be a PowerShell script, a VB script, or an EX key, uh, executable setup, or, or it's a simple Windows command line, for example, Microsoft RDP. So how do you set up this? It's like you go to your settings screen, and once you go to the settings screen, you set up your remote tools here. So here's a remote tool. Um, you have like all these categories here. You can set up, for example, Microsoft RDP. I'm setting it up under remote desktop. So you go in here, and you can say, hey, I want the name to be Microsoft RDP. We have like placeholders, we can pass uh, an asset name or a IP address and everything. So this is how we build. This is probably a Microsoft Terminal Service Connection executable. And we can pass arguments. So when you execute it, what it does is like basically execute from the cloud um, to your network and um, RDP into your network. So everything is like um, <clears throat> sent over HTTPS. And we also have a small, um, decipher tool at the at the client level which deciphers this one we call it site agent okay and um, there was another question uh, which like how how do you um, do the workflow on um, how do you implement the workflow on the boss um, test so one basic example of a workflow is like you design your form so for example let's say you have this form uh, uh, employ new hire form so under employees we have a new hire form right uh, new hire form so how do i automate this one so we have all these elements here so when you design the form you can tell them i want these um, controls to be available in my routing engine so when you design drag and drop on this thing once you have that one so what you could do is like you can go to our uh, uh, routing engine we call it routing engine so in the routing engine you can, uh, let me go to the routing engine and show you one example of the thing. So the routing engine, you can say, for example, um, here, I can say, if the service request is an improved new hire, then add more conditions. So um, these are like all the conditions you on, on your server, when you design the form, all the conditions you get, then you select all the conditions, title contains, and all those things. And then you take some actions. So that's how you automate your workflow. So we have like a lot of conditions here and all the form elements you designed available here. And then you match the conditions 
based on all or any or something and then you can perform all these actions you can also chain these actions not only that each ticket gets created goes um, goes through all these routing rules one by one from top to bottom and it looks for the conditions and uh, matches the actions in here okay actually Vishu, there's another question for you that they want to see uh, can we see the remote tools where you're actually installing the software can you repeat that please uh, can you see the remote tools where you're installing software? Okay. <clears throat> so on the remote tools where we are installing the software is, let me show you here. Go to the remote tools and install Notepad++. So what you have to do is like, for example, let's say, so I built a remote placeholders. I'll be building a network share because this is going to be a network share on your network. Uh, on your any any software which is getting deployed is um, on your network. So this is a network share, and I'll be tokenizing this one and calling it network share. So when I'm building my commands, I'll be using network share so that I am <coughs> I can change my network share anytime I want. So I go to my remote tools and I say install, for example, Notepad plus plus. So this is going to be, a, so this is like, I would say, this is related to my network share. So I can just say that my network share is here. So I can just say, this is my network share and PS tools, PS exec, whatever it is, or it could be your own uh, script file. And this is the argument I'm passing to this script or this command. And I want it to be installed on bulk command from the UI, I can select multiple or single command, you save it, that's it. And and then you, when you go to your your uh, any asset, you got this as install. Or you can if you selected multiple options, so it will be available for multiple machines. I can say actions. I can say install on Plus or uninstall or run an SCCM command or something like that. Okay, Vishu, I think we have time for one last question. Can you expand a little more on how AAA was able to integrate Boss Desk with SharePoint and calendars? Okay, so how uh, we help them is like we, we, we have a complete list of Boss Desk APIs. So it's all published under our docs.boss.io um, website. So if you look at this one, API documentation, so it's completely self-explanatory. We use RESTful APIs. So we have like APIs for almost everything. Um, how to how to um, API documentation, CI's attachments, tickets, and whatnot, right? So you can use these APIs and connect two different Boston system to another system, or or basically any other system. So you just need to use it. What Boston provides the complete list of APIs. If there is an API missing, but you you can. Um, call the boss for support and they will work with you to publish a new API, which is not there. Or we have a team of uh, engineers here who can get it done for you, or we can even help your developers um, implement this for you. So what AAA has done is like use this APIs and using the SharePoint API, they have connected those two APIs and, uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> transferring data back and forth between SharePoint and boss desk application. So um, I think we're out of time for questions right now. Um,
Uh, so thank you so much, David and Craig. Um, oops, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, the lucky winner of the Amazon gift card is Jerry Jordan from Hillcorp Energy in Alaska. So congratulations, Jerry. We will get that in contact with you uh, to get that over to you. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, David and Craig so much for a wonderful presentation this afternoon. Um, very, very informative, and I think we'll all take away a lot from that. Um, if everyone uh, would please uh, remember to complete our survey at the end with any feedback you have, we would greatly appreciate it. And we are here to answer any questions. Uh, you can contact us at sales at bosssolutions.com or by calling 678-684-1200. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful afternoon.